Quickly, this way. I'm terribly, terribly sorry, my Entrian friend. I couldn't have imagined that the wagon would break down like that. But I found some shelter up ahead. It's an old abandoned cabin, and it should serve us well for the night. And never fear. In the morning, I'll run ahead and get someone to fix the wagon. Then we can continue the trip back in safety and secrecy. You haven't said much since I returned. Is everything all right? I can only imagine what you're feeling. Making a dangerous journey across lands controlled by strange beings. And your only ally is me, one of the very same. And the journey is far from over, I'm afraid. It's a shame the main road is not an option. It's far too likely that we'll be halted by soldiers for an inspection, because the back roads are winding and rocky. It's anything but ideal, but my research outpost is the only place you'll be safe. The good news is that we have access to plenty of water. You must be parched after such a hot day. Go ahead and drink what we have left. I can refill at the stream later. Unless you'd rather drink straight from there. Uh, yes? No? Well, just take this water then. Ah, good. I was worried you wouldn't drink. You're an amphibian, or something similar, so you need lots of hydration. Not that I need to tell you that, of course. Actually, I had a question regarding that. Your people are very reliant on water, but we've seen ruins of yours all over the world, in all sorts of environments. Many of them didn't have easy access to water, which makes me wonder how you stayed hydrated. Did you develop some sort of advanced irrigation system? Some way to pump the water over vast distances? Did you... Did you hear my question? Do you not know the answer? Perhaps you lived in one of the human areas and never had to know. I can see that you're not in a talkative mood. I was hoping that some sturdy walls and a few swallows of water would help you to feel better, but perhaps I was naive. Well, I hope you don't mind if I talk for a while. Silence makes me incredibly uncomfortable. Even when I'm on my own, I tend to talk to myself. Oh, but if it does bother you, you only need to tell me. Or, uh, some other signal, perhaps. Uh, tap me on the shoulder, throw something at me, whatever works for you. I know there must be a million dark thoughts whizzing around in your head. Oh, actually, that's something that there's been some debate about. Is your brain in your head? It's the most reasonable place for it. But then there's the epic legend of Riyam. As far as we understand from our best translations, he is pierced through the belly and loses his ability to feel fear. Now, I always thought that your people simply associated fear with the stomach because of some physical sensation similar to the butterflies in the stomach that humans get from time to time. But my associate Aaron said, 
Come to think of it, I'm not going to get an answer out of you, so why am I even going on about all this? Well, I'm afraid that's just what happens when I'm allowed to prattle on. Let's see, what was I trying to say at the beginning? I was talking about fear because of Riyam. Riyam... Because of brains. Oh, right. I was talking about how you must have dark thoughts clouding your... brain, wherever it is. There are so many unknowns. You have no idea what's going to happen in the future, whether it's a year, a month, or a day. That must be incredibly disconcerting, especially for a race like the Entrians, where predicting the seasons was of the utmost importance. I can't claim that I'm much more certain about things than you are, but after all the wisdom that I have learned from your people, allow me to import a bit of wisdom to you from my own people. Try to live in the moment. Anticipation is often far worse than reality. Right now you're imagining all the awful things that could happen in the future, I'm sure. But none of this is happening right now. Right now, you're safe and secure. And we're both doing our best to make sure the worst-case scenario doesn't come to pass. For now, that's all we can do. Stewing over possibilities when there's nothing more to do about them won't help anything. If you focus on the moment, this moment, you'll find that things aren't as bleak as they seem. Uh, pardon? Oh, yes, of course. The brain is in the head, then. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> Silly of me to even consider the alternative. Your appearance may be unusual, with that two sets of arms and third eye, but having the brain all the way in your belly would make no sense at all. I'm happy you're speaking again. Has my advice helped ease your mind already? Well, that's just splendid, then. Simply splendid. Ah, of course. Well, something that might help us to focus on the moment is having something to do aside from being alone with our thoughts. The cabin is rather bare. Oh, but I did bring something in from the wagon. I was categorizing some artifacts I found on the way to your cave. None of them are from the entrance, I'm afraid, but perhaps you'd be interested to take a look at them. Let's see here. First, there was this earthenware jar. It looks quite simple, but there are some quite fascinating properties. You hear that? You can tell from the sound that it's high-quality pottery. The thing is, it was found in a sediment deposit from 20,000 years ago. There are precious few pottery places from so long ago. To find this entire jar intact, and to see such advanced skill in its making is simply unbelievable. And of course by that I mean that it's actually unbelievable. Simply not possible. Unless I were to completely upend our entire understanding of ancient civilization. But I dug it up myself, so I'm a little vexed trying to figure out how it got down there. Personally, I think it must be magic. Some sort of teleportation spell gone awry. But 
then who can really say? There wasn't a body down there with the jar, thank the heavens, and I have no clue why someone would teleport a single solitary jar. Now this one is interesting. It appears to be an idol of some sorts. Are you all right? You look very shocked. Really? Are you sure? Well, that's a silly question, I suppose. You would know better than anyone if you've seen an object before. You don't mean to tell me that this belongs to your people, do you? Absolutely astonishing! If that's true, then your civilization began much earlier than we thought. Your history has spanned for much more time than mankind's has. Ah, but what an insensitive thing for me to say. Entry in history is not over yet. It's been... paused, we could say, but not finished. As soon as we can, we'll awaken them, friend. You have my word. Now tell me, what is the purpose of this statue? It's not an object of worship, is it? I thought that your gods looked the same as you, and this bears no resemblance that I can see. How strange. We've never heard anything about demons in our study of your culture. No mentions whatsoever. How enlightening! So because writing about them directly was taboo, you relied on arranging these statues to tell stories of them. I wonder how many of these are out there, discovered by archaeologists like me that have no idea about their true origin. Do you... do you want to keep it? It represents something frightening, but I imagine right now anything familiar must seem comforting. Of course, I think no archaeologist should ever try to keep something from the culture that created it. As much as I could learn from it, it belongs to you more than it belongs to me. And besides, I've learned far more from you in a few days than I would have ever from years of digging. This is a difficult time for you, but for me it's been delightful. You're a constant source of enlightenment, and I enjoy your company as a person as well. Perhaps that should be enough for now. It would be best if we tried to fix the wagon early in the morning, so we can make some good progress tomorrow. Let's both get some rest. <laughs>